Say amen. Are y'all okay out there today? You're a little quiet on me. All right, we're starting Christmas at Emmanuel. Last week was our first week, um, and today we're going to continue with that. We're going to be speaking and looking out of Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And before we go there, I would like to recognize um, Pastor Mark is with us today. Pastor Mark um, is in the back. Pastor Mark is our um, lead pastor over at the Salisbury campus and I always like to recognize him and uh, appreciate him so much. Mark, thank you for all that you do so that we all can continue to do what we do. So thank you, Mark, for being here with us today. Mark chapter 4, and we'll be looking at verse 35 through 41. Bear with me today because this is not your typical Christmas peace, joy, happiness message. This message is from here today. This message is something that the Lord spoke to me about this week. Um, as your leader of this church, as your pastor, I, um, a lot of things were taking place in the life of the church this week, and the Lord has given me this message. So I hope that it speaks to you today. Verse 35 through 41, when you're ready, say amen. I'm going to read right from here. I got it on the screen, but I'm going to read right. I like to read it right from here. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. Did y'all hear me? This big storm is here, and Jesus is sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up. And he rebuked the wind and the waves, and he says, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have, do you still have no faith? And they were terrified, and they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Today, the title of my message is Panic Attack panic attack. I knew I'd get your attention today when I said panic attack. Many of you have had them before. Panic attack. Will you pray with me today? God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every person that is listening right now, every person in this congregation, every person online that is watching. And Lord, you know the person today who is overwhelmed this Christmas. God, you know the person today that has had storm after storm after storm going on in their life, Lord, and the panic has overwhelmed them. God, fear has overwhelmed them. But today, Lord, I'm glad that I serve a one who is greater than any storm. I serve one who is greater than any problem, any circumstance that has overwhelmed us today. Lord, this Christmas, God, we not only pray for peace, but we pray, Lord, right now for your presence. And God, I don't know what I would do without your presence. And I pray, Lord, it would linger in this place and over your people today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Panic attacks. Have you been there? Do you understand what I'm talking about, panic attacks? Well, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. I had a panic attack. Years ago, my brother Kirk got engaged, and we were all so excited that he got engaged to his now wife, uh, Paige, and we were, we were happy for them. And Paige's parents decided that they were going to do an engagement party at their house they had a beautiful home in Tyaskin on the water, and I was already nervous going to it. I said, oh, my Lord, please help me. Don't break anything. Don't do anything stupid. Don't say anything stupid. Behave yourself. And, of course, my parents had a talk with me on the way there, and I'm sure Mark as well. And, and we were getting ready to go to this party. We were so excited. We get there, and she had all kinds of food everywhere. And it smelled so good, I couldn't wait to get my plate. And as the people gathered around and we prayed for the meal, I noticed that she had some meatballs. Well, I love some meatballs. I know you're looking at me thinking, yeah, I could tell. But I love some meatballs, and I couldn't wait to get a plate of meatballs. So I go through the line. I'm scooping up the stuff on my plate, and I noticed that the dining room table was full and the kitchen table was full. I thought, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she said, oh, honey, don't worry about nothing. You just go, you guys can go ahead, and you can just go sit in the living room if you want. You sit anywhere you want. Just, just have a good time. We're so glad that you're here. 
So I took my plate and I was trying to be so careful. And I, I go in the living room and I go to sit down. And I, I mean, I'm careful every bite because I'm like, Lord Jesus, please help me not spill this plate. And I'm talking and I'm looking around, I'm laughing. And then all of a sudden, I drop my plate of meatballs on white carpet in this woman's living room. Now, you talk about a panic attack. I was having a panic attack because I was worried about this woman who was so gracious to have us in this home. I had never met her before. She's probably thinking, oh, my gosh, who is this person dropping her meatballs on my white carpet? I was worried about that, so panic came over me. I was worried about uh, what my mother and father were going to do, and I, I kind of don't didn't even look at them in the moment because I knew what my dad was thinking. Oh, you just wait till you get in the car. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I was panicking in that moment. I wonder today, can anybody identify with what I'm talking about? Does anybody ever identify, maybe not with some meatballs, but maybe you can identify and you know what it's like to go through a time where you had panicked. Maybe that's you right now. Maybe that's what's going on in your life right now. You're panicking over a situation. You're, you've got panic over a circumstance that you're going through this Christmas that you did not think you would ever be going through. I mean, let's be honest, just this COVID thing alone has had many of us panicking. I mean, could we just be real here in church? Many of us don't know what to do. We can't plan our future. We have jobs that are on the line. Maybe you've lost your job, but fear has come in, and I'm so afraid that this Christmas that the enemy will try to win because he is throwing fear everywhere and panic everywhere in the middle of your situations when really we seem to sometimes forget that we do serve one who is not about fear but is always about peace this Christmas. You know, I, I was thinking about the disciples in this context, you know. Jesus had just got done teaching and performing miracles, and I could imagine they were all fired up, man. And the disciples were gathered like, yeah, Jesus, what's up? Yeah, awesome, man, let's go. And he's like, hey, come on, let's get in the boat, y'all. Let's go on to the other side. Let's get away from the crowd, and let's go to the other side. But while they were on their way to the other side, a storm came out of nowhere. I feel like right now so many people are going through some storms that have come out of nowhere. And if I could be completely real, the whole reason behind my message today is because as a pastor this week, I would say that I had moments where I panicked, where fear has come on. I'll tell you why, because I started with a funeral that I had to do this week. I'm, I'm preaching at a funeral and I'm, I'm looking over at this woman in the casket who I never thought would, would be, I would be doing her funeral that quickly. I mean, I'm looking at Linda Orndorff, I'm seeing her, I'm seeing her in this casket, I'm thinking about all the many services that I grew up in church and she was there and I'm thinking about her family, I'm, I'm watching her loved ones on the front pew crying, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all that and then, and then I see my father get up and we're talking about the father's house, you know, in the middle of the fear, the panic and the uncertainty of what's going on, the unexpected thing, then all of a sudden we're talking about the father's house, we're talking about a place called heaven and I felt the peace of God come over me and I said, you know, right now in the minute of, middle of panic, the middle of storms that so many people are facing. I'm so grateful that God is there in the middle of the panic attacks. Many of you have had storms that have just come up all of a sudden out of nowhere. This week, I have had Phone call after phone call has left me up at night praying for people of this congregation from house fires to brain tumors to uh, seizures this week to, I mean, you name it, and it has happened. And I, that's why I wanted to share with you today that there are going to be storms. And there's storms that you had nothing to do with. You didn't bring them, right? You had nothing to do with it. You don't know how to prepare for these things because they come so unexpectedly. And right now, some of you are agreeing with me, Pastor Dana, I'm trying to enjoy Christmas, but there is panic that has overwhelmed me. There are storms that have come out out of nowhere. Everything was great. And all of a sudden, I've got the phone call from the doctor with this report. Or the word cancer has come over my house this Christmas. And Pastor Dana, we are praying for a miracle, but really, to be honest, we are panicking deep within. Can we all relate today? Can we all testify? Can we all speak up at this 9 o'clock service today that you know what I'm talking about, about panic that comes in in the middle of the situation? that we experience, storms of life. Huh. 
The disciples were on the boat, and that's what they did. They saw the storm come up. I would imagine I'd be the same way sitting on a boat, you know, and a storm come up, and waves are, are crashing in the boat, and they're there, and they're panicking. And the first thing they do is they go trying to run to find Jesus. I feel like right now people are going through storms, and you're running to find him. And you can't find him. And you're feeling alone and you're feeling depressed and you're feeling down today. And you're looking like, why is God doing this? Why? Why? Where is he right now? I just don't understand where I thought he was with me through this. I'm not hearing him. I'm not connecting with him. Right now, during this time, many of you are like that. You know what Jesus is doing? Jesus knows all about your storm. He knows all about the circumstance. He knows all about, but he's sleeping right now, y'all, in the middle of your storm. For some people, that annoys you. But you know what I've learned to do? I, it encourages me to know that in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the panic attacks that I experience in times of my life, when I don't feel like he's there, when I'm, what, Jesus, where are you doing? It excites me to know that my God is not shaken by my situation that I'm going through. Today, church, you might be worked up. You might be up all night. But God is not shaken by your circumstance. God is not up all night. He ain't stressing. He ain't panicking. He don't have to take no medication. God already knows what you're going through. And he's saying today, if you just trust me, if you just come to me in the middle of the panic, in the middle of the storms, this Christmas, I see everything you're going through. You might think that I'm sleeping, but I'm not shaken by it. Sleeping in the middle of the storm. I don't know what you're going through today, but I want you to know that we got to be like Jesus. We got to think about what it must have been like for him. I mean, can you imagine he was on the boat in the middle of the storm and he just starts panicking like, oh no, we're going to drown. We're going down now, guys. Can you imagine? But that's not him because he is God and because he is bigger than any storm. He is bigger than any wave. He's bigger than anything that is up against, you're up against this Christmas. He's bigger than all of it. God is bigger than the panic you're experiencing. He's bigger than the anxiety. He's bigger than the worry. He's bigger than the fear. He's bigger than the doubt. God is still God this Christmas, and you don't have to be weighed down by your panic attacks because God is still God, and he's sleeping in the middle of your storm. You know, I was thinking about Jesus and thinking about the fact that he doesn't panic, and then I started thinking about what was Jesus like. Well, Jesus, my boy, was slow and simple, right? Everything in his life was slow and simple. That, that's kind of how he operated. And so my question to you today is, not only are you panicking or have you experienced these kind of panic attacks, but I want you to know this. Do you control your pace or does your pace control you? Do you control your pace or is your pace controlling you? Because Jesus never experienced panic, right? He You don't see in the Bible where he's experiencing panic. You don't see him working up a sweat because he's all of a sudden he's had this panic attack come over him. You don't see him in the Bible. You know, it talks about how he walked on water. He didn't run on water. He walked on water. He didn't do anything in a hurry. I mean, can you imagine if Jesus is going and in these crowds and he's he's teaching and he's preaching? He's like, oh, hold up, y'all. Um, I got somewhere I got to go. Uh, so I'll be catching y'all later. I got to go. I'm in a hurry. And so many times, that's what the enemy throws to us. He, he likes to throw things to us so that we get addicted to being busy. And even in the middle of COVID, when many of us have had things taken out of our life, that we, we're not as busy anymore, but we're making ourselves busy. And we're pouring all this stuff into our lives and consuming things to keep us busy. You know why we consume ourselves to be busy? Because the enemy is working. He wants us to be busy. You know, right after Jesus is teaching and he's performing these miracles and he gets in the boat with the disciples and the storm calm, they're panicking and he's sleeping. He's like, chill out. And he talks to the wind and the waves and all that good stuff. And what's the first thing that he encounters when he gets to the other side? When he gets to the other side of the lake, Mark chapter 5, verse 5 tells us that he encounters a demonic man, Right? This demon-possessed man, I want you to know that God is not one that is busy, but I'll tell you somebody that is busy, Satan. 
His demons are busy. They never stop. They work all night and all day long. And if we're not careful, we can get so busy and the panic starts to come and we just start grabbing things because we want to be so busy. You know, it's like, hey, how you doing today? I'm busy, man. How you been? Busy, 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 and busy, busy. Demons are constantly working. And it tells us in Mark chapter 5, verse 5, it says that this demonic man, right, he was tortured, and he was tortured and tormented with, by the enemy, right? And, and all these things kept going through his mind. He was tortured day and night, and there was no rest. Right now, if we're not careful in the middle of our panic attack, the middle of Christmas, in the middle of the problems, in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the circumstances that you're going through right now, you know what's going to happen is all of a sudden your busyness is over, overwhelming you and the enemy's playing right in your hands. And you wonder, you wonder what's going on in your life. It's because you've not had time for him because you've been so busy and that's where the enemy wants. But I, know, I love that God, his pace was slow, right? Slow. It was simple. It wasn't busy. It wasn't stressed out. That's, that's how his pace was. And I got thinking about my parents have a pool, and every summer it never fails, right? All the little kids, they get so excited, they want to get in the pool, and they're, they're running, running, and someone's always saying, most of the time it's my mom, stop running, right? And that works a couple times, and they slow up real quick, right? And a few minutes later, they're running again, and all of a sudden I'll hear somebody say, walk. Walk, because almost always somebody slips and falls, right? If not careful, if they're running too fast. I feel like today, if you feel like you're slipping, if you feel like you're falling, it's because your pace has become too fast. And when your pace becomes too fast, you can't control it. And if you can't control it, how in the world is God supposed to control it? I wonder today, what's your pace like? What's your pace like in your life? Are you controlled by the busyness and by the running? I'm so grateful. That today, God is not saying, Dane, I don't have time for your problems because I'm too busy. I'm so grateful today that he got up. He could have stayed in bed, but he's here with us, right? He's working. He's an all-time God, and he wants you to know, hey, what's your peace like? You might want to slow down just a little bit. I want to encourage you that today. Panic attacks, problems, circumstances, storms in your life. I want you to know this. There's a difference between being around God and being alone with God. There's a difference between being around God and being alone with God. You know, Jesus, he was around so many people all the time, wasn't he? He was um, connected with crowds. He was connected with people. They followed him everywhere he went. My boy had no privacy. <laughs> I mean, people were following him all the time. But what we do see is in, in the Bible and all throughout different times, we see that Jesus, he would slip away, wouldn't he? He would go find that quiet place of solitude. He would find that place where he could just be alone. And, you know, many of us, we have so much noise and so many things going around us, we have to be careful. But Jesus, you know, he took the time in the middle of it. And I think that so many times we get so wrapped up in coming to church and being around people, and that's all good. We need to connect with people. We need to get involved in small groups. We need to come to church. That's all good. But for many of us, that's it. That's where it stops. Nothing else is done, but Jesus is saying, look, there's a difference, right? I need, you, I need you to actually connect with me by being alone with me. I wonder today, when was the last time you actually were alone with him? Because I feel like we've turned so much noise on in our life, right? Noise has just everywhere we go, there's noise. Or at least for me, I like noise, right? I, I like noise. In fact, I go to bed with a fan on at night. Not because I'm hot, because I want noise, right? I don't like it real quiet. I mean, there's times where I do and times where I don't. But overall, you can ask my kids, I like noise. Like, I, I go to wa wash the dishes or fold clothes. I'm pulling out my phone, and I got my app on iHeartRadio, man. I got my Christmas music playing. I got my 80s playing. There's always music playing in my house. But I also have to be careful because if I'm not careful, I, I can get so caught up in the noise that I won't actually hear the presence of God. I, I, I won't hear his voice, I should say. If I get so busy and so much noise consuming my life all the time that I won't be able to connect with him. But see, when you break away from the noise, when you get to your quiet place, 
right, then sometimes God whispers to us in a small, still voice. We have to be so careful that we hear it, and we can't hear it if we're blocked out by the noise. I wonder what kind of noise do you have in your life? What kinds of things do you have going on around you? Because a lot of us, we're scared, right, we're scared to, for it just to be quiet. Maybe you don't want to deal with something. I, I don't know, but, but I encourage you to get alone in a quiet place. You know, there are times in my life and I'm sure you can identify when storms are coming or panic is coming. And that's the first thing I need to do is brush away from the noise, brush away from the phone, brush away from the demands as a pastor and say, you know what? I've just got to be alone with God. I wonder what was the last time that you actually spent time with him? What was the last time you actually cried out to Jesus and said, hey, I got this panic and I got this uncertainty in my life and these unexpected storms, but God, I need to connect with you because I believe that he has a word for you. I believe that he's trying to talk to many of you today and especially at Christmas. Boy, we put all kinds of noise everywhere, right? It doesn't take much. There's chaos, there's stress, there's everything around us in the middle of Christmas as God has seen. And when was the last time you connected with me? Like, really connected. And I love that God would, um, would find the time of solitude, the quiet places in his life. They're so important to us. Those times where we can get alone to God to replenish our soul. The last thing today is stop rushing and start resting. Stop rushing and start resting. You know, we look back as the musicians come forward. We look back into the beginning of creation, and we see that Jesus has created all these things, but then he takes that one day, that Sabbath, right? He believed in that, that day of rest. And he did that because of the busyness that he was doing the whole time. He needed that day to just simply chill. And I've got to admit, I'm so bad about this, right? I, I say, oh, I can't wait for just that day. I can just rest. But then I, I find myself guilty for taking the time to slow down. And so Right now, if I could be real, I'm looking forward to Christmas, y'all, so I can get some rest, so I can just relax for a little bit. If I, It takes me a couple days to do that, but just to be able to just rest. And I feel like right now, so many of us are rushing around, and God is saying, I'm trying to speak, I'm trying to move in the middle of your panic, in the middle of your storms, but I can't because all you're doing is you're rushing around. We've got to take the time to rest in him, to rest in his presence. The other day, I was coming out of Walmart, and I saw this guy, um, he was walking really fast. He had a baby carrier in his, in his hand. and um, It was real windy that day. And so I saw him rushing in Walmart, right? And I thought, mm -hmm, just looks just like you know, everybody's rushing at Christmas. He's rushing. He's got the baby carrier and he's rushing in Walmart. And I kid you not, my husband didn't believe me, but I promise you. He's rushing into Walmart. All of a sudden, I see something drop out of the baby carrier. His baby fell out of the baby carrier, was not strapped in, fell out. And I saw him turn around, and I saw him go back, and I saw him grab this crying baby. And in that moment, I stopped, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I can't believe what just happened. I got in my car, and I started thinking. I said, you know what? That's how many of us are right now. We're overwhelmed by so much panic and so much fear and unexpected storms and circumstances. We're rushing to this problem, and then we're rushing over here. We have this problem, and we used to have God right here with us. We used to carry him everywhere we go, but we're rushing around, and so many things are grabbing our attention. We're just dropping Jesus, just dropping him right out of our life like it's nothing, and we're walking around, and we wonder why this panic has come, and we wonder why these storms, why we can't handle anything. We need to pick him back up, right? We need to put him in our life this Christmas because panic is going to come, right? We're going to be stressed out about something, but I love that my God is not shaken by any situation that I'm going through. I want to pick him up. I want to get in his presence. I want to tell him how much I love him. I want him to know that I can't wait to get to the Father's house. I can't wait to spend time with Jesus. And boy, there'll be no more panic that I think of Linda Orndorff. Boy, I tell you what, it's been firing me up all week. I can't imagine what she's experienced. Boy, she used to be so so terrified, so upset about her tremors, right? I said, oh, Miss Linda, but one day you'll be in heaven, and uh, hey, you don't have to worry about that anymore. One day you'll be in the presence of Jesus, and everything that upsets you now, everything that you don't understand this Christmas, everything that you're panicking about, maybe, maybe it's got an unexpected circumstance that's really 
feeling overwhelming you. And you're trying to come to church and you're trying to work through it, but it just seems like the enemy just keeps throwing at you and just, you know, it's just busy keeping you busy and he's busy throwing it up in your mind constantly. I want you to pick Jesus back up. And I want you to get him in your life and I want you to get in his presence because I know that when I'm overwhelmed, come on, y'all can talk to the Lord this morning. When you're overwhelmed and you get into his presence, it's the peace that he brings that surpasses all understanding. When you get in his presence this Christmas, if you take the time, which I encourage you to do, you will find the greatest gift, right? You will not only find the gift of peace, you will find the gift of joy, and he will meet every need in your life. And he's telling you today, I see the storms, I see the wind, I see the waves, but know that I am not shaken. I am not stressed out about your problem. I am not panicking. Oh, my pace is slow. My pace is simple. You need to slow down right now. You need, hey, when you have panic attacks, what they tell you? Slow down, right? Take deep breaths, right? Slow your breathing down. Slow down. This Christmas, some of you need to slow down. Appreciate what you have. Your family sitting at the table, appreciate them because, hey, that's another way the enemy tries to bring panic on you. We get so busy, we forget about our kids and really what they're experiencing right now. We get busy with our jobs. We forget that we have a family at home that needs us this Christmas. I've already told my husband, we're turning the phones off, honey, and we're going to have a good Christmas this Christmas. We're going to spend time with our family. We're going to eat some meatballs. We're going to eat some crab dip, crab loaf. We're going to eat some. You better have it, Mom. We're going to have some steak. We're going to have some banana cake. Come on, I'm planning the whole menu out for you. We're going to have an awesome time together this Christmas. I want you to know it doesn't matter what you're going through today. God sees it. He's not alarmed by it because he's already taken care of it. You stand with me this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. How many of you would say, Pastor Dana, Oh, pray for me. I'm panicking a little bit. I got a situation. No one looking around anybody. Nod your head. Yes, I see hands up. Yep. How many of you would say, hey, Pastor Dana, I need the peace that only God can bring this Christmas. Yes, I see hands up everywhere. Yep. Right now, God, we come in the name of Jesus. God, I speak against any storm. I speak against any problem. I speak against any circumstance today, God, that has come against your people today. But, Lord, they've made an effort to be in here. And, God, I pray right now, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus, God. We come against any distraction this Christmas, Lord, any noise, anything in our life that's going to take away, Lord, spending time with you in your presence this Christmas. God, I come against any panic. Lord, and, and may we be reminded that you're sleeping in our storms. Lord, you're an awesome God. And I pray for peace for everybody this Christmas. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Hey, I got you out here at a good time today, y'all. Hey, take two minutes, say hi to one another. Thank you so much for coming.